Hi, my name is Vitamin D. Sta well, I'm just going to take out the sound for you and I'll deal with it. Hey, my name is Vitamin D. Sta and welcome back to some Kinkoi. Uh, you already know what to do. I said I was not going to say it anymore. I'm not going to say it anymore. We left off where Maria, I think she tried to kill herself. It's still not clear yet. And she has a terminal illness and we don't know what it is. And yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Anyways, let's get started. I made the call. This was the right thing to do for now. She might know where Ryo was. Oh my god. Oh god, I'm so itchy for no reason. Ow! Oh man, I can't even, I could barely reach. Anyways. Yeah. Oh uh, yes, Chieka. I didn't think we were going to see her in this room. But I'm not complaining. The way this route is going to end is very, very, very worrisome for me. Compared to other people, I wasn't exactly normal. How long ago had I come to that realization? I was born with a frail body and apparently had a difficult life ahead of me because of it. Heck, even my brain was different. The world I saw and heard was unlike any other, and the differences between me and everyone else would practically be endless. More than anything else, though, was my personality. I apparently had a pretty warped personality. A foul-mouthed nurse had told me countless times that I was difficult. Within this hospital's walls, where children like me were gathered together, we were to recite two phrases. Yes or thank you. Since I questioned everything and talked back, the adults shunned me. No, it may have been my imagination and they would have ignored me, regardless. Why acknowledge the tiny life form as it fought and talk, talked back every step of the way when it was already headed for an early grave? Yeah, I had no idea what they had thought of me, but... Come again? Did I read that right? There are no unwanted children in this world. What unwanted children is this poster talking about? It means children who are unnecessary, who don't benefit anyone. My god, alright. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the first half I don't If that were true Then why go out of the way to print it on a poster Why hang it up in a room Why be grateful More than that I knew they deliberately phrased it that way Because nobody thought it was obvious Simplified even further It was proof that there were unwanted children in the world Not like there's any Anti-conceptives. Wait, did I? No, did I say that right? You know what I mean? I must have been a bad kid to have realized something like that at such a young age. Was I mature or just jaded? Or maybe my brain wasn't like a human being's? To this day, I still wasn't sure. Ichi. It's what everyone calls me. But hey, I'm fine with it since Oro is a, last, is a lame name. So. Everything changed when I met Oro and Sobi. I never met such a boisterous boy before, much less a beautiful, well-mannered blonde girl. And most strikingly... Come on, let's go, Soma! The time we spent together was golden, sparkling and shining in every possible way. It was as if my pitch black world had been reborn anew. At the time, I'd heard the tumor in my brain was at its largest. Oh my god. Currently, my brain was covered in tiny lumps. We didn't know how many there were, much less their condition. I'd been having some of them removed during routine surgeries, but a complete recovery was seemingly impossible. <sighs> I thought right. Last episode. 
It was sheer luck that I could still move. From what I had heard, it wasn't uncommon for the my mimetic muscles, starting with the outer extremities, to stop functioning completely. I seriously was lucky. Astoundingly so, as the odds of surviving another year were less than 5%. Or so I was told 10 years ago. I really was walking a fine line. My body had been gradually losing functionality over the last 10 years. Even so, I was still alive. No more than a quiet life to make sure the bomb in my head didn't burst. Literally. You're getting surgery after camp is over? Oh, that's scary. That's one of my fears, having the need to get surgery of whatever kind. I don't like the idea of someone splicing me up like like a piece of meat. That's crazy. Well, we are a piece of meat, but you know what I mean, right? Like, you know, I don't. I just don't want to get butchered. Yeah. Ichi and Silly had both been shocked. I had been hospitalized for six months following my surgery, which meant I couldn't see either of them. I really should have just up and died. That's what my mom told me anyway. Oh my god. No hoping that though, there was a 1% chance I would survive the age 5 and I'd surpass that. My dad broke down first due to anxiety, that was when mom finally snapped. I had done mom wrong, but I really should have faded out of the picture before I met these two. Ichi. And Sovi. I never should have met them. I should have disappeared by now. I shouldn't have existed. Oh no. Wow, this route is very dark and I was not expecting this. I'm I'm gonna be very sad. When I awoke. The hospital, huh? The same as before I slept. That sucks. I'd hope to escape this place eventually if I slept long enough. I hate it here. I Truly hated hospitals, me too. I wanted to leave and go back to the dorm. Then never wake up again for all eternity. もう夕方え昼から I've been hospitalized for a few days now. I felt fine physically. If anything, I was burned out from all of these examinations. They hadn't just scanned the tumor in my brain once or twice after all. And the result was the same as usual. Or namely, they had no clue. The doctors had no idea how my brain could be operating normally, and they summed it up to being a mystery of the human body. Oh well, it didn't matter either way. Even I had no clue. More importantly, お前、また our cynical nature definitely made it easier for the two of us to get along. Yeah. First, I had to get better. First, indeed. Ayaka headed home, so I immediately closed my eyes. Would I be able to sleep? I only just woke up. Still, I wanted to sleep. I wanted to sever my consciousness. I hated this place, the hospital. Since something that would never get better for all eternity scratched at my eardrums. When will you be better? Hurry up and get better already, man. Sorry, Ichi. There was no recovering from this. Then let's play together. I'll teach you how to swim. <laughs> Shut up! Bromos died. But I was so happy. 
He told me to get better, like I was an ordinary kid. He told me we'd do stuff once I was cured. That made me incredibly happy. For the first time in my life, I wanted to get better. I was so very, very happy. Ichi. Ichi. Talking in your sleep? Huh? Oh, you're up? Morning, Ryo. <laughs> Bro just spawned. <laughs> oh, settle down, settle down. We can't have your blood pressure going out of whack again. I held Ryo against the bed when she tried to jump up. Her surprise quickly turned into anger. Surprisingly, no. Wait, wait, you got it all wrong. Zoe wouldn't tell me anything. She did tell me to figure it out on my own, but I kept that part to myself. I came here on my own. Yeesh. I ran all over the place for two days straight. Uh, well, not 100% on my own. Oro, I see. Got it. You totally need to stick around then. Chieka. I called Chieka and Torio when whom I hadn't spoken to since this past summer and asked for their help. Rio had been in poor health since we were kids, which meant she'd likely use the same hospital. What was the hospital that took care of the terminal patients patient invited to that camp? I got in contact with every last person who attended that camp I could think of. Chieka, mom, and dad helped, of course. Even Torio and Takato pitched in. They practically jumped at the chance to help me, and I wasn't exactly going to turn them down. I thought things would be more awkward, but I guess childhood friends came in handy at critical moments like these. Thank you. To avoid letting them make it past her curtain, I asked them to leave. It was probably rude of me to rush them out like that after they got into all that trouble, but that's how it needed to be. I was sure Rio didn't want anyone she didn't know to see her right now. Rio seemed to have realized the situation she was in and quickly held her bandage wrapped head. Guess so. My memory came back to me a little while ago, though. This was the reason why I was convinced that Rio was a boy back in those days. It was hard to tell at a glance as she was usually bandaged up and wore hats, but she had no hair. She had a short butt cut to make it easier for the doctor to perform surgeries. Since we'd gone to camp together, I had several chances to see under her hat. I could have sworn there had been times I had spied some light brown hair through the gaps in her hat, but that likely was the case. Rio had even said her real hair color was black, after all. That was likely the meaning behind why I'd never see it back then. Rio let out a resigned sigh. It was a wig, huh? She turned her attention to the clothes hanger perched near her bedside. And there at the top, where you would put a hat, was her golden blonde hair. <sighs> See? What the whole Maria Bishop thing? I only just thought, oh, well, it's because of that that she has, like, different hair and stuff, but I would have never guessed this because she was also terminally ill. That threw me off. Despite acting like she'd given up, she definitely still didn't want me to know. Her expression was stiff. What should I say? <laughs> um, Rhea, I'm pretty sure I never told you this, but... Huh? I've actually got a thing for black hair. <laughs> Damn, you're well educated. How do you know that? Oh yeah, she's loud. Man. Dang it. Oh, that was like very, very, very early on to the series. I just caught that. Well, anyway, there you have it. I like black hair. I don't actually like blonde all that much, so it really doesn't bother me if your hair's a different color. So yeah, don't worry about it. Rio still looked sulky after my lame attempt at consoling her. Very lame. But the one silver lining was that her expression turning sour made one thing clear to me. 
She was acting like her usual self. Did he kiss her on top of the head? This is how I feel. So, uh, don't worry about your hairstyle or whatever. Real looked pleased. ごめん、いち。俺体直せなかった。もうそんなに長くないってままだ。お。あ、いし。うん。文句言うなよ。これでも奇跡で10年生きてんだからな。今日まだ生きてるのが奇跡なんだからな。でもごめん。俺お前の
kind of get hesitant and it's very understandable you know because you know if you go for it it's gonna be very very painful probably very soon but yeah i'm just thinking about that right now wow it's really something else i have no clue whether i could do anything the better in future and it's hot as hell in here but if anyone could give her even a slightly better present i know i could do it better than anyone since her past had always been mine I really was the only boyfriend she would ever consider the best in the world. Are they really gonna end it there? Please tell me it's not the end. Please. Oh, thank God. I was a little nervous. I was like, no, 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 wait. WAIT! Then <laughs> Rush. The seconds the teacher finished her long, winded speech, I promptly dashed out of the room. Oh, God. The doctors performed the rounds during the mornings at the hospital Rio was at, so visitors weren't accepted except for patients in critical care. Rio's condition wasn't critical, so I could only visit in the afternoon. As such, I did at least attend morning classes. And from here, I would make my way to the hospital by bicycle. It was an even greater dash. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was out of breath even when using a bike. I really was out of shape. All the same, I never lowered my speed. I wanted to spend every moment I could with Rhea. Psh, I bet. Even more reason now. Rhea! Oh, oh look, she looks better. Oh, I'm I could shut your big ass mouth up. Holy crap. She's so annoying. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I made it. Jogosaki was relatively miffed that I'd managed to find Rhea. I could only assume she wanted to keep Rio all to herself. Sorry though. I felt the same way. We both had no choice but to bear with it. Look at her all flustered. What a rare sight. No, actually, Ryo looked at Jogosaki kind of apologetically. Aye, aye. She irritatedly stood from her seat and walked out. Oh, was that it? I took priority. I actually ended up driving her out. Maybe it did make me feel a little guilty to see it pan out like this. Oh well, forget about her right now. Yes. He said yeah. Ryo's eyes relaxed as I walked toward her. That only made sense. This is a whole new side of her that it feels a little like, what the heck? Like, why aren't you being mean? I can't say I hate this though. I liked it. Since I was her boyfriend, I sat down in the seat near her. We silently gazed at one another and... <laughs> eh? She smiled bashfully. The sense of distance between us was once again iffy. But this mildly embarrassing feeling wasn't so bad either. So, that's how it is today, huh? You've got your hair? Wait, you grew it? I thought it was a wig. Wait, what? What's going on? Don't sweat it. This looks great on you. <laughs> Perhaps the bashfulness she felt had raised her spirits a little? Rio's expressions were unusually animated today. That's what I'm saying. If she got excited, would her blood pressure and whatnot be alright? Those weird thoughts crossed my mind. She gets excited and passes out. <laughs> but, how are you feeling today? Yeah, maybe. Sounded like she was in good shape. Strictly speaking, none of us, her doctors and modern science included, had a clue of what to make of Rio's condition. There was no telling when she might deteriorate. In which case, the present was what was important. I had to treasure that fact she could smile in this moment, which is a very, very rare phenomenon. Um, so I'd like to ask you something pretty basic. The long and short of it is that something's wrong with your head, right? That's insane. Sounds complicated. 
The one thing I understood was that it was incurable. Uh, hmm. She pointed to the back of her head. I touched just as she invited me to do. My fingers made contact with the side of her head and slowly worked their way backwards. They ran along her skull. Squish. Ah! Yeah, it did. There was nothing there. There was a hole in the middle of her skull. Ah! Oh, God. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! Well, that's why she was rabid. Oh. <laughs> I was like, she's overreacting. And now after finding out her condition and that she had a hole there, well, no wonder she got so rabid. Oh my god, that's valid. I'm sorry, Rhea. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> That's what Mina Chan touched back then. <laughs> I could understand why a strong minded girl like her had turned so meek. Anyone would freak out if they touched the missing part of someone's skull. <laughs> it's okay. I doubt I could make any sense of it, even if you did explain it to me. <laughs> Did you not just hear him right now? Ah! <laughs> uh, a cynical grin was plastered on her face. Oh. Man, this was tough to answer. I didn't want to tell her. It freaked me out, but it also felt wrong to lie. It startled me. Soka. I downplayed it. Yeah, of course. Well, well, I understand the worst of it. That's what your hair is for, then? Hmm. Ryo put a finger at the base of her golden hair, between her wig and her scalp. I caught a quick glimpse of her sparse real hair. It had been the same in the past, but she had a similar buzz cut when we were younger. Anyone who needed periodic surgeries would obviously be limited to shaved hairstyle. Uh, well... I've seen female delinquents with shaved heads before. Sorry. Yeah, what, what, what are you saying? I picked the wrong way to be supportive. <laughs> Man, this wig's really well made. I gently ran my fingers through it. It was silky. What is this? Some sort of cutting edge medical technology? Yeah, Jim. Oh. Well, it looked good. Yeah, it didn't quite have the same feeling as natural human hair. I got the feeling I had seen this hue before, though. Hmm, a decade? Oh, it's Sylvie's hair! Oh, <laughs> Yo! Oh my god! The way everything's connecting, I'm just like... Pff, what the f... <clears throat> nice. Uh... That's right, that's right. Now that she mentioned it. Oh my gosh. It's Sylvie's hair. Wait, okay, never mind. I was about to ask a, a dumb question. I was about to say, wait, so why does it look different from so What's dried out? Wow, Sylvie is such a sweetheart. So we seemed so mature at the time, but you could see signs of her current mysterious side if you think about it. <laughs> Rio giggled. The mood lightened. Stories about Sylvie were sure to follow any time I talked to her. So, how are things otherwise? You're able to lead an ordinary lifestyle, aside from that, right? <laughs> how the heck are you able to take heavy hits off a cigarette then? I don't understand. There was a reason behind why she always slept so much too. Your state of health aside. I guess you really are in bad shape. Not that she really seemed that way. Lack of stamina aside. Mm. Weren't you running around like crazy back then though? <sighs> 
I'm sorry. I really was a brat back then, and it appeared that self-diagnosis was right on the money. Eh? What do you mean? Huh. Oh, that's how it is. I expected her to say it was all of the coughing or headaches or other discomforts like that, but she had it rough in a way I hadn't anticipated. Oh. I'm sorry for making fun of you for being a smoking addict. I don't know, man. It's way tougher than I imagined, to be blunt. Couldn't you have told me all of this stuff about yourself before you were hospitalized? I could have at least responded with a joke then. Good point. It was quite a shock. No sense of taste. What kind of world would that be? I couldn't imagine. Lots of stuff turned pretty blah if you ate it with your, mo with your nose pinched. Was it a harsher version of that? And your sense of smell was on its way out. Your ears are fine, right? We're having a conversation and all. Oh. Uh, huh? How so? Ah, uh, that checks out. It did occur to me that you hear exactly what goes on in my room, but I haven't heard any complaints about thin walls from the other border girls. Ria had said that she had heard everything that happened happens in my room because the walls are thin ever since I first met her. I had thought it was strange a dorm built for a rich students would have thin walls. As it stood, I could hear practically nothing in Ryo's room for my own. I guess it was simply the case that Ryo's ears were abnormally fantastic. Is that also, like, due to your illness? Yes, it's Wow. Uh, that was one heck of a bombshell to drop so casually. Uh, we know not. I know nothing about her, bro. Every freaking sentence she speaks, I'm finding something new, and I'm like, bro, what? 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 Man. Man. That blindsided me. <laughs> That's a joke, right? No way. You're not blind, right? Several of her reactions would be bizarre if she couldn't see. Both 10 years ago and since we reunited. Yeah, what are you saying, dude? Yeah, you definitely saw the barrage of biddies. Could the reason you didn't realize we watched the same movie twice in a row be because... フランス語は聞こえても意味わかんねえし。盲膜に問題があるわけじゃなくて、こう、視覚特に色彩を認識する部分がおかしいんだって。She wow. knocked her index finger against her head. 色を認識できないの。正しい世界を見たことないからよく知らないけど、多分すごく暗い。Dark? ほかの人が普通に生活してる空間でもちょっと薄暗いと全部真っ暗なのまあこのご時世昼も夜もどこかしらに光源はあるからそれを比較対象物として <笑> Alright. 
安心したか I was most likely shocked and I didn't have it in me to laugh. Sorry, even with your explanation, it's not clear to me. Is it color blindness? So, the one that's the most important part of the world is the most important part of the world. Whoa. The most important part of the world is the most important part of the world. The most important part of the world is the most important part of the world. 色彩ってものを感じたことがないの。A monochrome world. Maybe that meant she only saw outlines? It was a difficult world, the picture. あでも一つだけ見える色はあるよ。金色。Hmm. 正確には自分からキラキラ光ってる色。銀とかラメ入りだとギリわかる。でもやっぱり金が一番見やすいかな。Hmm. 俺にとっての世界は線と黒と金色なんだ。I definitely couldn't imagine it.The one thought that did occur to me was When I get this close, can you make out my face? な、なんだよ。I brought my face right up there.I bet you can tell from up close.Can you even see my face? そ,そういうことじゃないんだって。Rhea blushed and turned her head sideways. 見える見えないじゃなくて、認識できないの。顔の形とかはぼんやり見えてるから安心しろ。視力は一応 0.1 くらいならあるから。Then, yeah. That did sound different from what my sensibilities would consider being unable to see. Um, anything else? Since she described some exceptional hardship, I wondered if there was more. I'd love to think there wasn't.、Uh, Her eyes, ears, nose, and tongue. Her physical stamina. Differences from other people were evident in the majority of her physical capabilities. That left. Rhea clutched her throat. How do you know? Yeah, I see. What a relief. No, her life was still immensely harsh here now, but. You live in more of a fierce world than I thought. Come on. Naka o sun na yo. Hotcha umarets ki ko nan da kara. Jibunga fko da to omotta koto a nai. Tada so you. So you kao sare no a yana na. Aware me te uko. Kawai so to umare te kao. So you kao sare to. But. Sorry. <laughs> お前のこと好きになった理由の一番はそこなんだから。Because you thought, because he thought you were a guy? How about that? Well, then I had to at least be the me Rio wanted. In the time that followed, I learned a lot about Rio's personal circumstances. She had told me before that her father had passed away, but she and her mother were estranged because of it. They were originally a married couple who raised their daughter in lockstep. But our daughter will live to the age of 10. Let's at least shower her in all the love and affection we can while she's still alive then. Or so they seem to strive for. But when Rhea hung on to life past the age of 10 and her husband died first, her mom cut contact. She hadn't seen her in over two years. This likely played a role in why she turned into a delinquent. Yeah, it wasn't my place to interject. I knew why she had gone down this path in life, and I understood her mom's hardships too. She grew close with Jogasaki, her naggy class representative, around the time she started to turn into a delinquent. Much to their surprise, they learned Jogasaki had also taken part in that same camp. I didn't remember her though. Where had she been? Jogasaki had helped her out in more ways than I knew, and she had even arranged for Ria to attend Noble Academy. Noble Academy prioritized applicants who excelled in secular talents, and if she got in, she could generally graduate no matter how much time she took off. It was a perfect match for Ria's physical constitution. What was Rio's talent? She would never tell me.、Mm. 
At that academy, she enrolled in was the dearly Miss Sylvia Sama from her past, who she panicked and hid herself from. <clears throat> oh yeah, I finally remembered. Ria said something about it back then. Ria had plans to undergo surgery immediately following that camp. The success rate was below 30%. Should that too be a success, it would expand her life expectancy from a month to about a year. If I recalled correctly, I had been such a shock to the system that I took it more as a joke. Ria hung onto the razor edge of life and I had no idea death itself had been so close at hand. And so, the same girl who was expected to die after camp ended, was sitting right here full of life, 10 years later. That was the strangest fa facade, that fa face it, facade, faucet to worry over. I don't know. If I had to guess, she probably didn't go see her because she thought any reunion would only lead to sorrow. Likely the same reason she hadn't told me her true identity at the start either. All right, fair, 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 fair. Time flew by while we were talking. I've heard hospital food is gross, but how is it really? Are you not listening, dude? Oh, really? When are you gonna tell them about the Maria thing? We kept on talking, never boring of it when. Hey, get away from me. Oh, right, sorry. Higuchiyo? Rather than hearing that from one of the nurses, I spotted one of my classmates instead. Higuchiyo, why are you here? <laughs> you know him? Oh. What? This place had a name like that? え、どうも。久しぶりに来てみたら、城ヶ崎さんがプンスカを怒って出て行かれたので、多分ご友人の相馬さんの面会と思い来てみたのですが、まさか大郎くんがいらっしゃるとは。相馬さんとはお友達な
心に毒をなあやかっちが面と向かって毒づくなんて珍しいね。I'm right here, you know. How could I have expected she'd get indignant out of the blue like that? やはり私、あなたが嫌いなようだわ。Right, I pieced that together the day we met, but you've never said it in my face before. Jokosaki was acting weird, probably because she was on pins and needles. Tadaima. Oh my god, she's back! Okay, Jokosaki immediately went to greet her. The date of Ryo's discharge had been moved up considerably all the way to today. Jokosaki was over the moon, enough that all the v i t r i o and her belly gushed straight out of her mouth. She looked real like crazy, didn't she? I was excited myself, but maybe it was best I stand down for now. Jerusaki glared daggers at me until the very end, then headed off back to her room. We already had our luggage taken back in, so. It is smashing time. <sighs> Sorry. Her first stop was my room. <laughs> Real sprawled out on my bed. What a free spirit. You hate hospitals? I don't know. Do doctors actually like hospitals, though? Especially being the doctor that delivers the bad news that you have like five minutes left to live. I personally could never. And if you're someone that does that, good for you. But I could never. Not that there are any doctors watching this, right? I'm sure you guys have better things to do. <laughs> She had me there. Hospitals do have this particular smell to them an ethanoly acidic type of smell. I know. You're fine, I think. Oh, but the smell might have taken hold in your clothes a little. Smell? She still maintained an ordinary sense of smell? Oh, you know, though, you've got sharp ears. That's crazy. Incredible. I could tell people were there, which I assumed to be a good thing, but I had no idea what was being said. But if that were all true, wouldn't a quiet hospital be better than this noisy dorm then? Yeah, now that you mention it. Matching set with Sylvia, right? <coughs> <laughs> Tell me why that beep beep was so spot on. That was good. Well, from being in the hospital, she probably memorized the sound, I bet. No, it's not a joke. Stop. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> I did not mean it like that. Chill. <laughs> まあ、ずっと寝てるのには慣れてるから、寝てごまかしてたけど。Mm. Oh yeah, I guess people with perfect pitch do have it rough in places like those. Your mind focuses on the jumble of all of those different types of sounds. この量くらいうるさければ、逆に気にならないから。やっぱりここにいるのが落ち着く。Ryo's eyes fixated on me. Ah,、uh, um, she seemed delighted enough to be here. But as for me, how could I say this? Uh, yeah. I guess I prefer the hospital now that we're back here. Like, kissing and stuff feels super lewd. Sorry. Are you allowed on the. <laughs> oh god. On the flurry of events at the hospital, the point we firmly promised the day. But now that we've regained our composure, embarrassment resigned. Reigned. <laughs> Not resigned. Reigned. Supreme once again. We all felt so strongly like a friend, especially when I thought about everything that happened 10 years ago. When we jumped in the kitchen out of nowhere, it made me self conscious in more ways than one. Um. First off, 
Congrats on being discharged, Rhea. Uh, uh. <laughs> that got the standard greeting out of the way. So, what do we do first? Is there anything you want to do? Uh, mm. Let's finish the movie with the boobs. I mean, the bitties. What? Again? Well, she has been eating hospital food. Hospital food is like... <clears throat> It's like school food, but probably a little better, I would hope. Uh, sorry. I'm all out. <laughs> hey, that's not very nice. Mini. I used the last of it up to confess to you the other day. You ran away in the middle of our kiss, so my only choice was to lure you back with your favorite meal. <laughs> You've got the wrong idea. Everything went off without a hitch between us at the hospital, but things were getting rather messy now that she was home. Oh well. Maybe this level of distance suited us. Lovers who were still friends. It suited me and Rhea. Me and Soma. <sighs> there it is. Yeah, let's watch Biddies. Hmm, sure. But does TV work for you? おっぱいとかドーンって出てれば、誰かさんはあれの最中にキスしてきたから、次も同じパターンが効くかも。Aren't you the one that made the move? Ah, <laughs> nice idea. Nice. We snuggled up to one another and resumed the film. DVRs were outstanding. Quite some time had passed, but it picked up right where we left off. However, おっぱい全然出ねえな。Ah, oh, disappointing. That's the worst. All right, but I have to wrap it up here. Yeah, I kind of wanted to finish this little bit too, but it's okay. We'll pick up some other time. After all, you'll be back, right? I would hope. I want to say this episode was tame, and it was in the sense where nothing exciting happened, but it was still a good episode though. And we learned, I learned a lot about Rhea, and I was completely bamboozled by everything I learned. Now all that's left, and I'm waiting for it, and I can't wait. It's for her to, you know, to tell him about the Maria Bishop thing. I'm like, <laughs> I can't wait to see his reaction. Although we've seen it already before, I still, I feel like in this route, it'll be a little different, I would hope, I think. I don't know. But man, I love this route. This route is so good. And it looks like there may not be a bad end after all. I mean, she has a terminal illness, so my mind was already like, oh no, oh no, oh no. Imagine if Yuzusoft was like, we're going to make all these roots have a happy ending, but except the girl with the terminal illness. We're going to make people love her, and then we're going to break people's hearts at the very end. Like, imagine how cruel that'd be. That's what I was thinking. But you know what? It's not bad to be prepared. That way you won't be that hurt. Or as hurt, because dang. It, it's perfectly set up for them to do a little plot twist if they wanted to, you know? Or a little bad end. But anyways, with that being said, I'm going to wrap the video here. It was, it was a good episode. It was a real good episode, and it had me worried for a sec. Thankfully, she seems well, and hopefully, she doesn't die in this room. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy it, please, 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 hit that like. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Share this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video, as always. Y'all stay safe, and until next time.